Hello and welcome. So in this session, we are going to cover some very important Spark internals. We are going to see what a Spark job is. We are going to see what are stages in a Spark job, what is shuffle and sort operation, what are tasks, what are narrow and wide transformations, what's the logical plan, how exactly does Spark go about executing uh, you know, the code that you have written in your driver uh, script. All right, so let's start. Uh, let's first look at uh, some of the basic operations that we perform in Spark. So most of the APIs that Spark provides can be divided into two basic operations. First is the transformations and the second is the actions. Most of the Spark APIs, right? Now, uh, when we talk about transformations, basically transformations are used to transform your data from one form to some other form. Right. We've already seen some of the transformations in action, like map, flat map, filter, reduce by key, group by key, repartition, etc. Right. So all these transformations basically take uh, you know, uh, some data as input, apply some logic, and then produce some data as output. Right. So that, that's what transformations are. Now there are two subtypes within transformations. One is a narrow transformation, another is a wide transformation. So what's the difference? So a narrow transformation is basically something which can be applied to a partition of data independent of other partitions, which means it's not dependent on any other partition. Independently, you can process a partition of data without even thinking about what's happening with the other partitions. In other words, it's not dependent on other partitions data. For example, let's say you just want to square every number in an RDD, right? In this case, uh, squaring one number is not dependent on any other number present in, let's say, any other data partition, right? You can, in parallel, process all the partitions in an RDD at the same time. So these are called narrow transformations. So if you have like 10 partitions of data, you can process all of them in parallel without being dependent on each other. Right? So these are called narrow transformations. There is another category, category of uh, transformations called wide transformations. Here, basically, your partitions are not independent of each other. For example, group by key. Right? In this case, you need to bring data of all the keys, or data from all the partitions that have the same key together, and only then you can basically apply this transformation. Right? So in this case, you cannot actually process all the partitions in parallel as such. First, you need to bring all the data belonging to the same key together at one place, and then you can apply this transformation. And hence, these are called wide transformations. We'll understand them in more detail when we look at a use case uh, in, in the next slide. The second thing is actions. Now, action is something which basically triggers the job. Okay, an action is something that triggers a job. For example, collect. An action basically makes Spark really execute everything that you, you have specified as part of your other transformations. Okay, so now let's uh, look at an example to understand it in more detail. So here is a snippet of code, which uh, basically is trying to find uh, average score per subject from a uh, uh, from uh, from an input data set called scores.cs. We have already seen this example as a hands-on exercise in one of our previous sessions. Let me just uh, re-explain everything here. So we are reading a text file which contains scores. And this file contains basically roll number, subject, and score for each subject. And then we are applying a transformation called repartition. We are basically, let's assume that at the first step, uh, Spark loads the text file into an RDD and it has only one partition. We are applying the repartition function to divide it into two partitions. Then we are applying a map function to extract key value pairs, which means at this step, we are extracting the subject and the score from, from the input data. Then we are applying map values where we are converting every uh, score into a tuple of score comma one because we want to count the number of uh, students uh, uh, for that uh, subject as well. Then we are applying reduce by key transformation, where we are basically aggregating all the scores together and aggregating all the ones together to get the count of students. And then we are again applying map values, where basically we are 
dividing the total score by the total count of students, which gets us the average per subject. And then we are applying the action called collect. Now, if you look at this code snippet, uh, the first operation, which is text file, is a narrow transformation. Second step, which is repartition, is a wide transformation because it's going to result in shuffle of data, right? You had all the data in one partition. Now you want to convert it into two partitions. So it's a wide transformation. The third operation, map, is a narrow transformation. The fourth operation, map values, is a narrow transformation. The fifth operation, reduce by key, is a wide transformation. Because again, you need to bring all the data that belongs to the same key together on one node or one executor or one task, right? So that's why it's a wide transformation. Uh, the sixth one, map values, is a narrow transformation. And finally, you have an action, which basically triggers the job. Now let's see what exactly Spark does when you write this code in your driver program. So first thing that Spark needs to do is come up with a logical plan to execute this code. Okay, The logical plan is nothing but a sequence of steps that Spark needs to perform in order to execute your job. And sequence of steps is nothing but all these operations that we have just seen. Text file, repartition, map, map values, reduce by key, and map values again. So this is the sequence of steps that Spark needs to perform in order to compute the result. Now, if you were not running, let's say, this uh, logic in a Spark program, obviously, you would have done each and every uh, operation in a sequential manner. But because Spark is a distributed processing framework, Spark will try to process, you know, uh, execute some of these steps in parallel wherever possible. So now let's see how exactly Spark does that. So this is your logical plan that we just saw. Now, what happens is Spark needs to divide this logical plan into stages. Now, what's a stage? Basically, whatever things can be done in parallel in one go across, let's say, multiple tasks can be put together into one stage. Very simple logic that Spark uses to divide any logical plan into stages is that it looks at, at what uh, points, uh, we are using wide transformations. So if you look at this logical plan, what are uh, wide transformations? First one is the repartition and second one is the reduce by key. So these two are the wide transformations that we are using. So what Spark is going to do is it's going to divide this logical plan into three parts. So basically it divides the logical plan into multiple parts based on wherever we are using a wide transformation. So what's going to happen is it's going to create three stages. Stage one is going to be text file and repartition. Stage two is going to be map and map values. And stage three is going to be reduced by key and map values. Now, one very important thing to note here is that these stages cannot run in parallel. So you cannot have stage one and stage two running together in parallel. The reason being stage two is dependent on stage one. Stage two is taking its input from the output of stage one, which means first stage one has to complete. Once the stage one is complete, only then stage two can start. And once stage two is complete, only then stage three can start, right? Now uh, let's look at how exactly uh, Spark executes the stages. Let's assume that when we uh, apply the text file function to create an RDD, let's say we uh, got one partition in that RDD. Okay, now because it's only one partition, you can basically only run one task uh, in stage one. Okay, basically the number of tasks that you can run in parallel at any stage is dependent on the number of partitions of data in that stage. If you have only one partition, you can run only one task, right? So this one task is gonna, uh, you know, uh, read the data from the file into an RDD and then we are applying the repartition function. And the reason we are applying repartition function is because we want to create more partitions so that we can execute rest of the stages in parallel. And we provided uh, two partitions as, as an argument to the repartition function, which means at the end of task in stage one, we are going to have two partitions. Okay. Now what happens is output of every stage is written to a buffer called write exchange. Okay. 
So when the stage one is complete, its output is gonna get written to something called write exchange. And similarly, at the beginning of stage two, we have a buffer called read exchange. Now, please note that write exchange and read exchange can be on different nodes within the Spark cluster, right? Depending on where those partitions are, where those executors are running, write exchange and read exchange can be on different nodes within the cluster. Now, the data gets transferred from write exchange to read exchange because stage two takes its input from the output of stage one. Now, it's not really a simple copy of data from uh, write exchange to read exchange. It's actually called shuffle or sort operation. And it's not, as I said, it's not a simple plain copy of data. It depends on a lot of other factors. For example, in group by key, uh, the data belonging to the same key needs to go to the node where data for the same key is coming from all other stages or all other tasks, right? So it's not really simple plain copy of data, but shuffle sort operation takes care of the fact that which data from which write exchange needs to go to which read exchange. All right. So data gets copied through shuffle sort from write exchange to read exchange. And what happens after that stage two becomes active. Now we know that when we call repartition in stage one, we actually converted that uh, one partition of RDD into two partitions, which means in stage two, you can actually run two parallel tasks, right? So this uh, map and map values and this map and map values, these two can run in parallel on two partitions of data that we created as, as output of stage one, right? So now here you are getting real parallelization. If you actually, let's say, uh, repartition the input data into 100 partitions, you can run 100 parallel tasks as part of stage two. So now as part of stage two, your map and map values, they uh, run in parallel in as, as part of two tasks. And then your data from stage two also gets written to write exchange. And from then stage three's read exchange will read the data and then execute reduce by key and map values in parallel for the partitions that stage two has generated. So this is how the final execution plan looks like. Okay. Your uh, stage two is running two tasks in parallel. And let's assume after stage two also there are two partitions only. And then your stage three will run two tasks in parallel. And finally, your collect operation will collect the output from stage three. Uh, as a summary, so what we have looked at is what a job is. A job is basically nothing, an action uh, which gets called in a Spark driver. So if you are calling, let's say, three different actions in your Spark driver, then there will be three different jobs. Uh, created by Spark, okay? What is a stage? A stage is nothing but, you know, a division of your logical plan into uh, different parts and stages are created based on how many wide transformations you are using. So one important uh, thing to note here is if you feel that your Spark job is not really performing well enough, right? You need to somehow reduce your number of stages because at every stage, when data goes from write exchange to read exchange, it's a very expensive operation, okay? Uh, because your data gets transferred over the network, it's an expensive operation. And hence, if you can reduce your number of stages, which means you can reduce your number of wide transformations, your job will be much, much better performing. We looked at what is shuffle and sort. It's basically transfer of data from write exchange to read exchange. We looked at what is uh, what are tasks. Tasks are nothing but parallel units of execution flows happening based on your number of partitions. And uh, that's it. I think, yep, yeah, that, that, that's all about uh, the Spark internals covering uh, jobs, stages, shuffle sort, tasks, uh, narrow transformations, wide transformations, logical plan. Thank you so much.